Hi class, how's everyone doing today? Um, our lesson for the day is contraceptive methods, so we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Our objectives to, for the day, you guys will list three methods of contraception, be able to describe three types of hormonal and non-hormonal birth control methods, and analyze two repercussions of not using condoms while having sex. So for our pre-quiz today, just to test your guys' prior knowledge of contraception methods, we're going to do a little Kahoot. So my students will go ahead and join. Great, obviously this isn't for a grade or anything. I just wanna see where you guys stand um, with all this information. All right, choose the best definition of contraception. All right, so pregnancy prevention is the right answer. Um, someone put sexual intercourse, um, that's not, accurate, but we're going to learn all about this later. Good job, Bob. Contraception is always 100% effective, true or false. So it looks like we have a little bit of a split decision here. Um, contraception is not always 100% effective. Um, the only 100%, oh, actually, I won't say that. Which of the following is not a hormonal birth control method? Yes, the condom, that is not a hormonal birth control method, but we will get to that as well. Which of the following is non-hormonal birth control method? The cervical cap, um, yes, that is not a hormonal birth control method. Abstinence is the only birth control method that is 100% effective, true or false. Yeah, so that is true. Which birth control method prevents against STIs? Condoms, yes. Um, not spermicide. Spermicide actually does not um, prevent STIs. Without insurance, which of the following can be the most costly method? The IUD, yes. Um, it can actually be quite expensive without insurance. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Johnny had the highest streak. Good job, Johnny. Which of the following is not a side effect of non-hormonal birth control methods? So nausea was the right answer. Um, irritation is a side effect, so moving on. What are the two hormones found in hormonal birth control? Yeah, estrogen and progestin are um, oxytocin and progestin and testosterone and progesterone that is not accurate, not found in um, hormonal birth control methods. Tubal ligations of vasectomies must be surgically performed, true or false? True, yes, that is true. Okay, good job. That was the last question. So let's see who won. Bob. Oh. Good job, Johnny. You killed that one. So that was it for our pre-quiz, um, just to get a little bit of a basis on where you guys stand. And now we'll go on to talk about um, actual conception, I mean, contraception methods. So here's Madison to talk about these methods. Hi everybody, I hope you're having a good day. So I'm gonna be talking to you about hormonal contraceptives. But just to introduce what contraception is, it's used to prevent pregnancy. And in some cases, it does prevent against STIs, but we'll get into that more in a little bit. 
So there's different types of birth control methods. The first one's gonna be hormonal birth control. So these all contain hormones that prevent the implantation of either an egg or, yeah. Um, Non-hormonal birth control methods um, don't have hormones, and this includes things like barrier methods, so condoms. And then permanent birth control is something that you probably won't consider in your earlier stages of life, but once you're older and already have kids, it's something you might consider. And then behavioral methods, um, which is mostly just abstinence, and that's choosing to not engage in sex. So some hormonal birth control methods. Um, the first one is a birth control implant. If you guys like something that's low maintenance, this is something good. If you hold up your pinky, it's about this big, and it just goes right here in your arm. Um, so it's a rod that's placed in your arm that releases hormones. You have to get it implanted, implanted with a doctor or nurse, and also last five years. It's one of the most effective birth control methods as well, but it doesn't prevent against STIs. This is a common thing with almost all, or all hormone, hormonal birth controls don't prevent STIs. So that's something to consider as well. Um, the next one is an IUD. The IUD is about this big and it's actually inserted right into your uterus. Um, it lasts three to seven years. It's really effective and it must be inserted by a doctor or a nurse as well. The next one, um, how many of you guys like getting shots? So it seems like a lot of you guys don't like getting shots, so this might not be the method for you. It's a shot that's injected by a doctor, nurse, or even yourself, and it just prevents pregnancy for up to three months, and it's 94% effective. The next one is a vaginal ring. So this lasts anywhere from one month to a year, depending on which one you get. It's 91% effective, and it's just a flexible rubber ring that you actually insert into the vagina that releases hormones. And then the birth control pill, this is a really common form of birth control. Um, and most people have probably heard of this one before. So it's a pill that's taken daily around the same time that, release, um, that releases hormones into your body. You take it orally and you need to see a doctor in order to get it, but you can also get any of these methods out of Planned Parenthood or with your primary care provider. And these are 91% affected, um, but you also have to make sure that you're taking them daily. And then also a birth control patch. So if you don't wanna take pills, but you also don't wanna have something inserted into you, you also have the option of getting a patch. So the patch, you just have to change weekly and you just um, wear it on your body like the picture shows and it's 91% effective. So there are some side effects with hormonal methods just because you are um, putting hormones into your body. So this includes irregular periods, discomfort, headaches, sore breasts, nausea, and abnormal discharge. But this is something that you can work on with your doctor. And if you don't find a birth control method that works for you, there probably is one out there if you're interested in hormonal methods. So next, Kenzie is gonna to talk to you guys about non-hormonal methods of birth control. Hi class, I will be talking about non-hormonal birth control methods. So the first one I'll talk about are male condoms. I'm sure this is one of the most known uh, birth control methods. It's just a latex or plastic um, that is placed around the penis during sex and it is a barrier method. This is 98% effective if used correctly and it does protect against STIs. The next one is the female condom. This is a little, um, not as popular, but it is also a latex or plastic um, item that is placed in, inside the vagina before intercourse, and it is also a barrier method. But this one can be less effective than the male condom, but it, it still does protect against STIs. Diaphragm is a silicone cup that is placed inside the vagina to cover the cervix six hours before sex. So you have to remember and like plan to put this in before. And it is a barrier method and you have to use spermicide with it for the best protection, but it is only 84% effective and it does not protect against STIs. The next method is the sponge, which is a round little squishy plastic um, thing that is inserted deep in the vagina 24 hours uh, prior to sex to cover the cervix. So this is also something you have to plan for and it is a barrier method and you use it with spermicide as well. 
and it is 76 to 88 uh, percent effective and does not protect against STIs. The next method is the cervical cap. It's a silicone cup that is inserted into the vagina to cover the cervix. It is another barrier method because it prevents sperm from um, reaching an egg. This is only 71 to 86% effective and it also does not protect against STIs. Spermicide is like you see in the picture, a little gel that you can um, put into your vagina that will kill sperm. And you can purchase it at over the counter, but it is only 71% effective and also does not prevent STIs. This IOD is specifically non-hormonal because it uses copper to um, av uh, avoid sperm because sperm does not like uh, copper. And you implant this inside your vagina and, um, or in your uterus and it prevents pregnancy for up to 12 years. We have to get it inserted by a doctor and um, it is 99% effective though. So this is a really um, effective method to use. Withdrawal method is also known as the pullout method. This is not guaranteed. It's only 73% effective, but it can go lower than that as well. It's just when the penis is pulled out of the vagina before ejaculation and it does not prevent STIs. Some side effects of non-hormonal methods are discomfort, heavier periods, specifically with the IUD, uh, skin or vaginal irritation, and difficulties putting in the contraceptive methods like the sponge or taking them out. There are also permanent birth control methods, but these are usually used later in life after you have children because they're not irreversible, they're not reversible. Uh, these two include the tubal ligation, which is where the fallopian tubes are blocked so that the eggs cannot leave the ovaries. Uh, you have to get this surgically done by a doctor, but it does last for life and it is very effective. The next one is vasectomy. This is done on a male and it's when uh, the tubes in the scrotum that release sperm are blocked, so the sperm cannot travel outside of uh, the penis, and this also lasts for life and is very effective. The next uh, method of birth control is behavioral. This just includes abstinence, which is just not having oral, anal, or vaginal sex. Uh, this is the only method that is 100% effective, and it costs nothing, and it protects against STIs. So now uh, Brooklyn is gonna do an activity with you guys. Hi class again. So right now I want everyone to take out a piece of paper and a pen or a marker. And for our activity, I want you guys, um, here's a word bank. So I want you guys to write down the most effective in one column and then the least effective in another column. Um, these are randomly put in order, so it's up to you guys to decipher. Um, I'm going to give you about two minutes. So. Okay, it looks like everyone's um, pretty much done, so I'm going to go to the answer key. So the most effective vasectomy, IED, oral contraceptives, and male condoms, the least effective withdrawal pullout method, and spermicide. So how many of you guys feel confident in your decision? Awesome, great. So I'm hoping you guys learned a lot from this. Um, next, we are going to go into our post quiz. So this is the same Kahoot if you guys have um, the same, if you guys still have it up on your um, computers or phones. Birth control methods, number one, choose the best definition of contraception. Again, this isn't for a grade, just to test um, how much you guys learn from the first Kahoot to the second one. Okay. 
Okay, awesome. Pregnancy prevention. Um, sexual intercourse is not the answer, but um, most of you guys got it right, so that's awesome. True or false, contraception is always 100% effective. False, that is right, good job, everyone. That is definitely something that um, was an important point from this class. Which of the following is not a hormonal birth control method? Good job. Yeah, the condom, it's not um, a hormonal birth control method. That one is a non-hormonal birth control method. Which of the following is a non-hormonal birth control method? Awesome, the cervical cap. Good job, everyone's doing so great this time. Good job, Claire, you have the answer streak of four. That's awesome. Another true or false, abstinence is the only birth control method that is 100% effective. Good job. If you remember, abstinence is no vaginal, oral, or anal sex. Um, definitely 100% effective. Also, um, prevents against STIs. Which birth control method prevents STIs? Yeah, condoms. That's the only one um, out of these options um, and also out of the hormonal methods that prevents STIs. So definitely something to keep in mind. Without insurance, which of the following can be the most costly method? Yeah, the IUD can be very expensive without insurance. However, it is very effective. Which of the following is not a side effect of non-hormonal birth control methods? Nausea, that's right. That is not a side effect of, of non-hormonal birth control methods. What are the two hormones found in hormonal birth control? Estrogen and progestin, good job. And then our last question, tubal ligations and vasectomies must be surgically performed. Yeah, true. So these are the two permanent um, methods of contraception and they are, they must be performed by a doctor or nurse. Great job, Claire. 10 out of 10 answers. That is so awesome. Okay, so for the homework today, um, there is the link to a chart that I want you guys to fill out. Um, we're going to go over it in class on Wednesday, but um, please fill it out to the best of your ability. If you need to leave a couple open and blank, that's okay. So we're going to go over it, but please use your notes and online resources to complete the chart by Wednesday. And these are our references that we used for the PowerPoint. Um, you guys did awesome today. Thank you so much for participating in both the cahoots and the activity. And I will see you guys all tomorrow.